Hello guys, this is Doran's Movies and today I'll be giving you top 5 most horrific projects of the Lich King. This video is a translated, heavily modified version from a Russian YouTuber by the name of Lekarok and the original is in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into the lore. Number 5. Underworld Anubarak and the Nerubians were essentially the spine of the undead scourge. Proficient in underground digging and all sorts of construction efforts, they created an elaborate set of caves under most of Northrend, creating a scourge presence below and above ground. The Argent Crusade held a tournament and a major base in North Ice Crown, which was secured as much as possible. The Lich King could not launch a direct offensive as it would be suicidal, so he directed the Nerubians to dig a tunnel under the arena. The earth collapsed and the heroes faced a Nubarak. This plan did ultimately fail, but in the end it caused a major headache for the crusaders, showing them that no amount of fortifications makes them safe from the Lich King. Number 4. The Perfect Death Knight as soon as Artis awoke, he resurrected the powerful dragon Sindragosa. Soon after, he ordered his servants to build a massive fortress, intending to reign as the one true king from his throne. Always on the lookout for useful servants, Artis became interested in the idea of creating a perfect Death Knight champion. A Death Knight that would become a reaper of souls for the Lich King, much in the same way as Artis was for Nerzul. One of the first important candidates was Darien Mograin. Upon returning to Lordaeron, he kept an eye on him. At first, Artis was satisfied, but he realized his strong will would become a problem and he went on to search for more powerful champions. Soon, Artis became interested in a strong Tauren by the name of Trag High Mountain. Trag died by saving Anvina as a frost worm crashed into the castle. The torrent struggled significantly against the will of the Lich King as it was becoming stronger and stronger and it was consuming his mind. As he reached Artis, High Mountain resisted his will and even struck his supposed master which caused Artis to blast him through the air. His body was shattered and reconstructed but his mind was finally free. The next victim was a very popular hero of the Alliance, Tyrion Fordring, whom recently returned from exile. Artis sent his own Death Knights to a certain death in order to draw Tyrion out and turn him into his servant. This however backfired completely, causing him to lose his loyal servants and a new potential champion. Finally, the last servant was supposed to be Bolar Fordragon, Artis put significant effort in attempting to break him, but this never came to fruition. He also attempted to break the players, which would in a way be the ultimate death knights as they passed all of his challenges, but at last the Lich King was killed by them and Tyrion, and this death knight project was never realized. Number 3. Emerald Dream the Scourge corrupted much of the lands of Northrend. The dragons as protectors of Azeroth, nature and the earth were sent to stop this, however some of their efforts proved useless. Valitria Dreamwalker, a green dragon, was captured by the Lich King. Delivered directly to the Citadel, she was subject to many experiments, most of them conducted by the Liches. However, she heroically resisted their torture and the adventurers came to her aid, eventually setting her free. Had she fallen, presumably many secrets would have been given to the Lich King about the nature of dragons as well as the Emerald Dream. The corruption of the Emerald Dream by the Lich King could have been fatal for Azeroth. However, this was yet another failed plan. 
Number 2. Sunline when the forces of Illidan and Keltas were defeated below the Ice Crown throne, some remnants of this broken army were captured by the Lich King. The prisoners were transformed into the so-called Dark Fallen and they were resurrected as his servants. They were led by Queen Lanatel and a council of blood princes. They practiced dark magic, even vampiric in nature, and were incredibly powerful. The Nerubians and the mindless undead were the brute force of the Scourge, but the Sunline served as support for them, providing warriors with blood power and significantly empowering them. The Sunline, which was an elite faction within the Dark Fallen, were all very high ranking within the Scourge hierarchy, usually getting orders directly from the Lich King. They were all eventually defeated outside and inside the Ice Crown Citadel. Their death, in a way, cut off a big part of the brain of the undead army as the Scourge was significantly weakened by the loss of their presence. Lastly, number 1. The Resurrection of Gela Krond. As we know, Gela Krond was the biggest dragon ever on the planet of Azeroth. A lot of effort was put towards his demise by the future dragon aspects. Of course, being close to his burial site, the Lich King wanted to have the mighty dragon within his army. For this purpose, an army of necromancers, ice giants, sorcerers was sent to Dragonblight to resurrect him. The Scourge spent a significant amount of time digging, examining and tinkering with his remains. The Aspects fortunately noticed this effort and requested the help of the adventurers. The ritual was ultimately put to the end by the heroes of Azeroth and the monstrosity was never resurrected. Thus, Artes lost one of the most powerful potential assets and the Scourge was significantly weakened. Alright and that is all I have for this video, do check out the original video which is in Russian and also like and subscribe as it really helps out and keeps all the content going. Thanks a lot for taking the time out of the day to watch this video and see you next time.